Attritional advice can be so confusing. I know. It's, this is why it is so dangerous just to watch one or two two-minute videos and change your entire life around them. Hey, it's Dr. Toker, your friendly neighborhood colorectal surgeon. We've been talking all week long about this oxalate controversy, which I didn't think was a controversy, but it is confusing. And there are a lot of people who take away the wrong advice when they read about nutrition. And so the controversy we're talking about is the concept of oxalates in your diet. And there are some people who have been told not to eat any oxalates because it interferes with your body's ability to absorb calcium. But I'm telling you to consume foods that have oxalates in them because they tend to be alkalinizing. They're plant-based foods. They have phytophenols. They um, have prebiotic fiber. And they tend to be alkalinizing, which is healthy for you. And the alkalinization alone will keep you from forming a kidney stone. And when you eat these oxalate-containing foods, you can use that chemistry of oxalate binding to calcium and have that precipitate in your intestines so you don't absorb the oxalate. Okay, so that sounds like a circular logic. Doctor, how am I going to absorb calcium if you're telling me I can eat foods with oxalates? And I think the answer that I'd like to leave you with is to be cognizant of this chemistry when you're eating it. So every meal that you make, you should think in the back of your mind, how is this serving my body? There are going to be some meals where you're going to want them to be high in calcium with no oxalates. That way you truly do absorb the calcium. Have something that has magnesium in them when you're eating that particular meal because magnesium will help you absorb calcium. Vitamin D will also help you absorb calcium. So get some sunlight or if you're like me and you've had a melanoma and you're sort of worried about being out in the sunlight, then take a vitamin D and a vitamin K supplement because these things can actually improve your absorption of calcium. Okay. If you want to alkalinize your body and you should, then you should spend some time of your day trying to alkalinize your blood, which means you're going to wind up consuming some foods that have oxalates in them, such as the spinach, which sparks this controversy. Now, there are other ways that you can alkalinize your blood naturally. One of them is by using uh, apple cider vinegar or even lemon juice in water, which brings me to another point. Get your vitamin C from a natural source like that lemon juice. Uh, this can minimize your body's natural production of oxalates, which will happen with artificial vitamin C supplements. The final advice I'm going to leave you with as far as kidney stones, just wrap up this week, is make sure you're very well hydrated because when you hydrate, you're less likely to uh, make a kidney stone. And then also... Consider taking a probiotic that has oxalate metabolizing bacteria. One of those organisms are in the bacillus family. It's a good time for me to mention that our new product, Zive 7, has both a prebiotic fiber, which helps diversify the microbiome, and bacillus coagulans as a an organism in the probiotic component, these two things when combined can help chew up oxalates naturally in your food and again, help promote, absorb the calcium. All right. I think that wraps up the week on the, the great oxalate controversy of 2024. Last words are pretty much diversify your diet, understand your chemistry, get a good probiotic in there, that has bacillus organisms to chew up that oxalate for you so you can consume all the spinach that you want.